This is Boomer Life on CL 650. Peter Shad here. Welcome back to the program. The question is, are you where you want to be financially? A carefully thought out plan for your financial future is the integral part of building the life you want for yourself and your family. And thankfully, we are speaking with Jim Doyle, who is the Senior Financial Consultant with Investors Group Financial Services, Inc. And Jim, we're going to talk a little bit more today about the Greek alphabet than we normally do. And by that, I mean money. And there seems to be a general antsiness amongst people, investors of all stripes these days, a sense that things have been good for so long, like since March of 09, it's been good. And that maybe the other shoe is about to drop. Well, Peter, I I think it's important to remind most investors that it's impossible to avoid risk entirely in their portfolios if they want to enjoy a certain standard of living. People are worried about things like geopolitical risk, interest rate risk, liquidity risk, and losing money. And they're worried about volatility and uncertainty. It's interesting times, for sure, for investors. And it helps to have access to good, sound advice. And let's talk about interest rates. You just brought it up. Ten years of low interest rates and meager bond returns are leaving people seeking solutions. Do you think relief is around the corner if rates start to rise? I'm not sure we're going to see the relief that many would like. Some investors, in fact, could be looking at additional losses. Those near-bottom yields on bonds have dampened core bond performance, hurting many investors seeking income. It seems that investors are desperate for alpha, which you've defined before as returns beyond a comparable benchmark. Remember those kids' books, uh, Jim? I'm thinking of an analogy here. Where's Waldo? Yeah, I think so. Uh, The picture books with the man in the red and the white striped hat and the shirt with the glasses. Exactly. Waldo was hidden all throughout each picture and you had to find him. It's like instead of Waldo, we're searching for Alpha. Tell us about this elusive creature known as Alpha. Well, Alpha and Beta are important tools for many investors when it comes to figuring out if their investments are doing well. Technically speaking, both of these are risk ratios and they're used as a statistical measurement for calculating returns. Is that this new Greek alphabet we're being introduced here today and how it could help uh, on our way to financial success, Alpha, Beta, Gamma? Is that what uh, we're talking about, Jim? Absolutely. And... You know, it used to be that alpha and beta mattered a lot more, okay? But let me tell you a bit about them. As you just mentioned, alpha is the active return on an investment compared to a benchmark such as the S&P 500. Or you might know it as a portfolio manager's outperformance. And beta? It's the volatility factor, the level of risk taken to get a return. It's also often compared to a benchmark like the S&P 500. As we'll see... Uh, during the course of this conversation, I'm sure. More recently, however, and I'm excited to talk about this today, is what we call that third element, gamma, okay? It's the value of advice, and this has substantial impact. Arguably, the value of financial planning could be measured by determining how much better off you are economically when you engage a financial planning strategy. Let me break it down for you if I can. Using the example of retirement income, When it comes to generating retirement income, investors arguably spend the most time and effort on selecting good investments, fund managers, etc. This is called the alpha decision. Deciding on an asset allocation strategy and then selecting products the advisor believes will provide alpha or return. And I think most of us have a handle on that term asset allocation and investment strategy balancing risk reward through balancing a portfolio's assets according to an individual's goals, risk tolerance, and then the investment horizon they have. But can you give us another example of alpha, perhaps? For example, a 9% return on a growth fund when the market is returning 5% becomes less impressive when other equities are earning 14%. And beta, if I remember correctly, refers to how much return you received relative to the level of risk you took. Exactly. Exactly. You mentioned earlier what really matters, though, is gamma, the value of strategies and the value of advice. Well, using that same example of retirement income, gamma, the value of strategies and the value of advice can be measured by improvement in income during retirement. 
Gamma. It's about understanding how various financial planning strategies impact the fulfillment of financial goals. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, but if, if I'm working with an advisor, shouldn't I be relying on my advisor to suggest the most appropriate strategies for my situation to, to be bringing the gamma to me? Well, to, the best way to put this, it depends. The challenges we're undergoing in the investment uh, industry will likely separate advisors from planners. So how do I know uh, the difference between an advisor and if I'm working with a planner? If you haven't been offered a written financial plan, chances are you have an advisor, not a planner. So to clarify, your financial plan is where you get the stress test, your financial planning strategies, to see which strategies have the biggest beneficial impacts. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. I love working with the plan. It's a roadmap to show where you're coming from and where you're headed to. The benefits of Gamma, of sound planning strategies, seem pretty endless. So why are we only just hearing about this approach now? It seems pretty basic. Plan your way to a better future and better advice creates a better outcome. I think one of the reasons is getting so much attention now is that people are expecting more value from their advisor relationships. They're asking their advisors, what am I paying for and what do I get in exchange? Well, no better time than now to consider what you're paying for and when it comes to your advisor relationship, is this relationship measuring up to your expectations? If you find it's coming up short, you can call Jim, 682-5431. That's 604-682-5431. Maybe even just get a, a second opinion from Jim. And if we think Gamma as advice designed to help us as investors make intelligent financial planning decisions, I think I would speak for many people when I say, I thought my advisor was giving me the Gamma all along. You're telling us otherwise? Sadly, and I have to say this with the utmost respect, most advisors don't focus substantially on the financial planning strategy side of things. But isn't the, the whole purpose of financial planning to help investors reach their financial goals, goals like having enough money at the right times to finance various needs or desires? You raise an awesome point. By far, the largest financial goal has to be financing a certain standard of living during your retirement years and maintaining a certain lifestyle the lifestyle you've become accustomed to. And there's no getting away from the fact that we're living longer and none of us wants to reduce our standard of living in retirement. So while financial goals are almost always announced as specific amounts of money and specific points of time, financial advice often focuses on selecting specific investments, such as mutual funds and stocks, and assembling them into portfolios, not on financing a lifestyle which is where the real stress test of a property constructor portfolio takes place. The real question is, will my portfolio support my lifestyle, both now and into the future? Mm. So what you're saying is the focus is shifting from how am I making the money to how am I making my money work for me? At its essence, the conversation about Gamma is really about taking the time to make sure that you're getting the most value for your time, your money, and your effort. You know that your financial strategies are substantially helping to build your wealth. As an expert advisor yourself, Jim, would you be able to share a couple of strategies that you might routinely include in your planning focus with your clients, strategies that would add value to your relationships? I'd be happy to. Now, they might sound a little technical at first, so but please bear with me. Okay. The first looks at dynamic withdrawal strategy as opposed to a level withdrawal, okay, from investment accounts. Well, what does that depend on, Jim? Well, the level of withdrawal would depend on your financial wealth and is going to fluctuate with movements in the market and life expectancy, and it declines over time, allowing for greater flexibility on withdrawals. All right, so in layman's terms, basically we take money out at different rates depending on where we are in our retirement life cycle. I get it. We wouldn't necessarily know um, how much to take out on our own. I mean, nothing could be worse than operating without a strategy and then ending up without enough money. That definitely hurts. Okay. The second strategy I'm suggesting is in regards to tax efficiency. Don't underestimate the substantial impact of taxes on retirement lifestyle. Does your advisor routinely make this part of their focus? You could be leaving money on the table if not. 
Making tax-efficient decisions means taking advantage of tax deferral accounts, such as RSPs and RIFs. This could mean withdrawing from taxable ac accounts uh, during retirement and only withdrawing from tax-deferred accounts when required by law or uh, by need. Back to bringing the gamma. Tax planning is definitely where the value of, of advice comes in. It's not uncommon when we talk to clients looking to redeem funds that they want to redeem from the worst performing investment. That's not a good strategy then? <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be an option. However, you, you must consider a few things first. Um, if one of the investments has a sizable capital gain attached to it, what do the tax consequences look like? How about if the investment was used to generate a regular stream of income and you remove that? How would you uh, uh, issues be different, okay, uh, in terms of the choices that you're making? These are the types of questions that we want to help clients navigate on a daily basis. Jim, you've given us a, a ton of great advice here today. Uh, thanks so much for the reminder that it's about financial habits as much as investment performance that determines one's financial success. You've raised some excellent points as to why we should all be considering and possibly reconsidering our advisor relationship. Are we receiving maximum value for what we're paying? Could we be doing better? And these are questions we should always be exploring and asking ourselves. If your advisor relationship is not taking you where you want to go or you're looking to make a change, here's Jim's number. Jim Doyle, 604-682-5431. And little changes can make big differences. Jim's number again, 604-682-5431. Paige, want to thank you as well for sharing your insight, your fresh money investment insights. And if our listeners want to reach you personally, how would they do that? So my number is the same. It's 604-682-5431. And my extension is 4213. I'm giving out candy because <laughs> I'm like, give me a call. <laughs> um, 604-682-5431, extension 4213. And my email is, it's a bit of a mouthful and probably nobody can write it down fast enough, but it's my full name, alanapage.brettle at investorsgroup.com. What a delight, you two. Thank you as always, and we'll see you in a month. This has been Boomer Life on CL650. I'm Peter Shad, and we've been thrilled to have Jim Doyle, Senior Financial Consultant with Investors Group, in. If you've been putting off getting your financial house in order, I'd like to encourage you to call Jim and his team. That number again, 604-682-5431, or email jim, jim.doyle at investorsgroup.com.